Ann Stephanie Drucker, Vice President of Educational Services at West Hills College Colinga. And I'm Sarah Shepard, Curriculum Chair and Co-Chair of the Clarifying the Path Project at West Hills College Colinga. And this is Arcady Pangea, I'm a Math Faculty SLO Coordinator and also a Co-Chair of the Clarifying the Path Project. Uh, this project was part of the Degree Qualifications Profile Project sponsored by the Crediting Commission for Community and Junior Colleges with support from Lumina Foundation. Our objective was to create a coherent plan of courses for students pursuing CTE degrees. We were at the juncture at SLO formation to go from quantity into quality. And so what we want to do is we wanted to ensure the degree level SLOs were valuable and really representative of the intentional learning that was happening in the classroom. In order to get to do that, we thought it was important to develop a cross-functional team uh, to make sure that we had a robust and dynamic project. In other words, make sure that we had uh, faculty out of their silos um, and interacting across the campus. The two degrees that we focused on uh, were our associate degree for a uh, socio science degree for transfer in administration of justice and our associate of science degree in agricultural science technology. Uh, we felt that was good. It gave us one transfer degree and one terminal degree to look at. Our team, myself, the SLO coordinator, the curriculum chair, uh, we chose also the institutional SLO representative, of course, the CT faculty, GE faculty, counseling, librarian, and administration. Beyond that, what we did is we chose these individuals from each of the other councils that were on campus so they could report back to each individual council so it really made it more collective and really as Sarah said out of the silos that we normally work in. During the process we had a few aha moments. Uh, one was that we really needed some professional development space. Uh, talking to the president, uh, so we needed a place to actually meet but not only meet we need some place where there is some technology. There's not just a classroom but some dedication to this. And what we were finding out through this process also is the whole concept we need to focus on skills and abilities, because that's what SLOs generally are. And as that happened, um, the, two, um, the two degrees here, the faculty in those degrees really started, started to talk about and think about skills and abilities as opposed to just what are their tests like or what are their curriculum like, but what are really the students learning. And uh, the third aha moment was faculty were really realizing about uh, the connection between degree level, course level, and program. That was really an aha moment for most of them, even the people that were not part of the, um, part of the, the two CTE areas. It was just in general, it was great to see that, how that connection takes place. And it was that last aha that uh, resulted in what we called the pre-DQP. As we started trying to map, we realized that we really needed to look more closely at the slows and decide when they were introduced, practiced, and demonstrated. So what we came up with was this pre-DQP. So this is an, a, a snapshot from the Administration of Justice program. The courses are across the top that are part of the program and the program learning outcomes are down the left hand side. Uh, so the faculty member went in and uh, identified when each of those outcomes were introduced, practiced, and then demonstrated. After looking at all the SLOs, we came up to the, the big idea that we actually have two different um, CTE programs here on campus. The outcomes for the Administration of Justice was to rewrite all their course level SLOs. They liked the program level, but it was the course levels that need a lot of changes. And again, moving on to quality. <clears throat> then the second idea was to have a sequence of classes. So in the previous slide, we looked at the introduction, practice, and demonstrated. Uh, the faculty really thought about when is she presenting the class? Uh, the ideas and skills, and when are they actually having to demonstrate it? And she had to flip flop a few of those to make that happen. The other one is the agricultural science and technology. Um, the faculty they wanted to write their program level SLOs. Course levels were just fine, 
and they wanted to make their program level of flows more tied to industry. And that was a big aha moment, especially for CTE classes. But we also noticed, as we looked at this, the specialized knowledge uh, grew considerably from the uh, Administration of Justice program. So we realized we really have two different programs. Um, CTE programs that lead to transfer for them to go on in their education, and CTE programs that lead exact, uh, directly to industry. And so with that, we noticed the uh, specialized knowledge group quite a bit for those type of programs. Uh, so what we learned, a couple of things going forward. Uh, first is that the sequencing of the courses is key. And that really came out of the development of the pre-DQP that we needed to make sure that students were introduced to the outcomes before they were actually asked to demonstrate them. So that went into scheduling and uh, the way that we put courses together for students to complete their degrees. As mentioned earlier, faculty were ready for quality SLOs. Um, many, many faculty came to me and uh, asked if they could rewrite their SLOs, and this was a great opportunity for them to see, not only for them looking at quality, but seeing how all the interconnectedness plays in into the degree and the program level. And what we also learned was that outcomes are more important than courses. Technology must support student achievement, not just course completion. So we really need to think about what are students really learning, and is this a valid degree as we um, look at the skills and abilities in those particular classes. And the whole concept of assessments must contextualize SLOs as opposed to just a really a uh, enumeration of certain SLOs and skills on the course. Well, we really are considering still the next year of um, how to map the GE education areas to DQP. And is that viable? Is that something that we want to go to the institution? As well as, uh, should the uh, DQP replace the institutional student learning outcomes on campus? Or this should be something else? Um, the third one that we looked at was the whole concept of a better way to collect and utilize data. Um, at this point, what we do is we collect really class data on students, and as a class, the teacher judges whether they passed or a certain percentage passed, but it was really the whole concept of we need to focus on students, not the classes, as far as the flows are concerned. A couple of other things uh, leading into the next year. We are in the process of succession planning for DQP leadership. Uh, our Katie or myself will move out of the co-chair position and someone else will move in. We have several learning areas that are interested in um, taking their degrees through the DQP project. So we want to make sure that we're planning ahead for leadership so that everyone on campus can participate. Uh, we also now have a permanent space for faculty development. Uh, that was one of the things that became clear to us early on. Uh, we need a place where you know, faculty can come together and, and work and collaborate and kind of spread out, um, not a classroom. Uh, and then the last thing is we are looking at this to leverage uh, into other initiatives, um, some grant partnerships that we're working on uh, with other colleges, uh, and then also using what we've learned with the outcomes to better our relationships with employers as well, to be able to talk to them about the skills that the students have in terms of those skills as opposed to saying this student has completed these classes. It, it makes a lot more sense for employers as well. So those were our, those are our areas of focus for the next year as we are going to continue this project on campus uh, and do a little more with it. Uh, again, if, if you need uh, additional information, there's uh, my email and telephone number there. Mine as well. And mine as well. So we look forward to hearing from you. Thank you.